Hello everyone. A couple of videos back, I took a modern twin mill and gave it this spectroflame look. From that video, several people asked for other videos to be made where I take modern cars and give them that 1968 look. One car that was brought up a lot was the Roger Dodger. This Roger Dodger, I believe, came out in the late 90s, early 2000s. I chose it because it's a copy of the original Roger Dodger from 1974. The modern Roger Dodger has been modified so that the engine is no longer a separate piece. I assume this was done due to choking hazards and to eliminate extra steps in the manufacturing process. I prefer the original car over the modern car. So let's get started and take it apart. One of the reasons I chose this car specifically is that it has a tan interior. Most early Hot Wheels had tan, white, or gray interiors. Any other color would look out of place. When I pull the car apart, you'll notice that the engine is riveted on. This is very rare today as it's a separate process and adds to the cost of the car. I'll also need to perform a separate process and remove it the same way I remove the base from the body. The next step, of course, is paint removal. I'm not sure what paint they used back then, but it can be a nightmare to remove. Here's the results after spraying it with aircraft paint remover the first time, and here it is after spraying it the third time. Much improved, but it still has a lot of paint residue that will need to be sanded off. Here's what the car looked like after all the sanding was done. I tried something different here in that I only sanded the car in one direction, down the length of the car. This made it take a lot longer, but the results were pretty interesting when you look at it under light. I found I wanted to keep it at this bare metal look, but I can make another one later. I should also note that while this is only an instant to show in a video, the sanding and cleanup process is by far the most work I put into any car. I use all sorts of tools like dental picks to remove the paint and deepen the panel lines to sanding needles and other sanding blocks I make, along with a ton of triple-aught and double-aught steel wool. The amount of effort you put in here really affects the end result of the car. Here's what the car looks like after polishing. I've shown this process in a lot of previous videos and have a video dedicated to it if you'd like to know more. I've also polished this car the same direction I sanded it from front to back. I found that it polished easier and I feel it gave a superior result, though I'm not sure if it was all that worth the added effort and time. For the color, I chose to go with Spectraflame Blue as it was a color I haven't done before and usually is the color most people think of when thinking of early Spectraflame cars. Since I put a lot of time and effort into getting the body to this point, I will dip the car into some denatured alcohol to remove any dirt or oils on its surface. I've never had any issue with Spectraflame paint coming off but I have started dipping the cards as I find that the paint goes on a little bit more evenly during the first coat. Here's what the car looked like after I painted it and it had two days to cure. It came out looking rather nice, but I'll be improving the finish later with some polishing. But first I want to switch gears and look at the base. After playing around with the car, I decided that I really didn't like how the wheels looked. I felt that they raised the car too high, exposing the interior plastic and just not looking as realistic as I would like. So I decided that I would drop this car so that the wheels would, in my opinion, look more realistic. The process to drop most cars is rather simple. I use some plastic cutters to remove the plastic fingers on the base that hold onto the wire axle. I try to cut them as close to the base as I can so that they will not be in the way later. I use 3 16 brass rod as my axle holder. I place the rod over the base and make a mark with a sharpie where I want to cut. I then use a cutoff wheel and a dremel to cut the rod in two. I used to use some wire cutters and just cut the rod, however I would then need to sand the ends to remove the collapsed portions of the rod. Once the rod is cut, I can then glue it into place with some super glue, making sure that it's even with the base. Now for this car, the body is used to press the axle against the base in the front of the car. Since I have moved the axle, I'll need to sand down the body to allow for the new axle. I accomplish this using small needle files to cut away at the two axle holders. I take great care here not to scratch the paint I have worked so hard on. Normally I would have done this before I even started sanding the body. However, it was only after I painted the car that I decided to fix the wheels. That's just how it goes. I have the same issue with the plastic interior, but it's easily fixed by simply cutting the plastic holders off with a pair of plastic cutters. With these changes made, the car now fits together with its new axles. So here's a quick before and after shot of the car. Let me know what you prefer the original or the lowered look. With the base now complete, I can look at finishing the body. The first thing I'll do is remove any dust and orange peel by polishing. Here you can see how that turned out. Polishing always improves the spectroflame finish no matter how nice you think it looks before. 
This car has what looks like louvered back windows. I'm going to paint these in with some black acrylic paint to offset them and also because I'm unable to polish the paint in them. While I'm at it, I'll also paint the rear of the car black. These details are common in most early red lines. To get this done, I mask off the area I want to paint. I then use an airbrush to paint in these areas. And then, after removing the masking tape, I use my finger or a damp towel to wipe away the still wet acrylic paint on the raised surfaces, leaving the paint in the recessed areas. This is a thousand times easier than trying to paint in these areas by hand. Once the paint is dry, I put the car back together and then add in a new pair of modern red lines to finish the look. I glue them in by using a small amount of glue on the end of the cut axle and then placing the axle into the brass pipe. When the glue sets up, the axle will not be able to move, but the wheels will still be able to turn. The nice thing about these red lines is that they are much thicker wheels than the normal wheels Mattel uses. The beefier wheels really make this car pop, or at least that's what I think it does. Let me know what you think below. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.